Hello everyone, in this lecture today, I am going to talk to you about the principle of yeast to hybrid screening, what are the different variants of yeast to hybrid screening, and I am also going to talk about what are the advantages and disadvantages of yeast to hybrid screening. So what is yeast to hybrid screen? Yeast to hybrid screen is a well-established method that is used to detect protein-protein interaction. Why yeast to hybrid screen is called yeast to hybrid screen? Because this screening is performed in yeast cells. Okay, therefore it is called yeast to hybrid screen. Why to hybrid then? Because here we have two hybrids. One hybrid consisting of DNA binding domain and plus beta protein and another hybrid consisting of activation domain and prey protein okay so what is a bait protein bait protein is a is a protein of interest and prey protein is the protein that interacts with the bait protein okay so yeast to hybrid screen is called yeast to hybrid screen because it is performed in yeast cells it is called true hybrid screen because here we have two hybrids one hybrid dna binding domain plus beta protein and another hybrid activation domain plus prey protein. Yeast to hybrid screen is used to detect protein-protein interaction. So let me now talk about what is a transcription factor. A transcription factor consists of two functionally and structurally independent domains like explained above DNA binding domain and activation domain. So our transcription factor it consists of two domains. One is activation domain and the other is DNA binding domain. Okay, DNA binding domain. So how the transcription occurs then? Okay, so here you can see that this is a transcription factor. Okay, this is a transcription factor. And this, this, this here is the DNA binding domain. And this here is the activation domain. So when DNA binding domain of the trans transcription factor binds to the upstream sequences of our reporter gene or the gene of interest, okay? So this upstream sequence, ups upstream activating sequence, this sequence can also be called as promoter sequence, okay? So DNA binding domain binds to the promoter, promoter region and activation domain is near to our gene of interest. Then what happens? Then the RNA polymerase, okay, RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase 2 is recruited. Then this RNA polymerase will make RNA from this gene sequence and this RNA will be expressed, okay. Let me explain again. So transcription factor has two domains, DNA binding domain and activation domain. DNA binding domain binds to the promoter region and activation then activation domain comes comes near to the our gene of interest and then activation and then RNA polymerase is recruited because activation domain has the sequence um, uh, that uh, can bind to our RNA polymerase so RNA polymerase is recruited and this RNA polymerase can now transcribe okay transcribe this gene into the mRNA sequence okay this is how our gene or the reporter gene is expressed, okay? So this is the principle. So now moving further then, what is the principle of a yeast to hybrid screen? Like I explained earlier, in the yeast to hybrid screen, we have two proteins. One is bait protein and the other is prey protein. Bait protein is our protein of interest, whereas prey protein is the protein that is interacting with the bait protein. As you can see here that bait protein is binding with DNA binding domain. So when bait protein binds to DNA binding domain, so because bait protein in the yeast to hybrid screen, bait protein is fused to DNA binding domain and prey protein uh, is fused to activation domain. Okay, in yeast to hybrid screening, bait protein is fused to DNA binding domain and prey protein is fu fused to activation domain. If these two proteins are not interacting, then what happens? Uh, DNA binding domain binds to the promoter region, but uh, 
since these two proteins are not interacting, so activation domain cannot come near to our reporter gene. Therefore, the transcription of our reporter gene cannot occur. So here in this case, transcription, transcription of our reporter gene cannot occur because activation domain does not come near to the a reporter gene and hence it does not recruit RNA polymerase. Therefore, uh, this transcription of the reporter gene cannot occur when beta protein and prey protein are not interacting. But when these prey and beta and prey protein they are interacting, then what happens? In that case, when beta and prey protein are interacting, as shown here, you can see that beta and prey they are interacting. So that means that DNA binding domain binds to the promoter region or upstream activating sequence uh, because beta is fused to DNA binding domain and beta is interacting with the prey protein. This activation domain also comes near to our reporter scene. So then what happens then? RNA polymerase is recruited and the transcription of our rep reporter gene occurs. Hence, uh, we can see the uh, um, color signal or the let's say the growth of yeast that I will explain later uh, about the selection process. Once again, when uh, our bait protein and prey protein, protein of interest and its interacting par partner, they are interacting. So what happens? DNA binding domain binds to promoter region and activation domain comes near to the our reporter gene and hence act, uh, the RNA polymerase is recruited and transcription of our reporter gene occurs okay so uh, so so this is the principle of yeast to hybrid screening but here in this case when they were the bait and prey protein they were not interacting so only dna binding domain uh, bound to the uh, promoter region but activation domain did not come near to the uh, our reporter gene okay hence it could not make a complete transcription factor but here in this case it made it it, it is a complete transcription factor the anti binding domain is binding to promoter region and activation domain is near to our mm, reporter gene and hence rna polymerase is recruited and the transcri transcription of the reporter gene occurs okay so now moving further so how is the selection done then so our reporter gene, our reporter gene, it can be our reporter gene. What can be the reporter gene? Okay, reporter gene can be uh, some essential amino acids. Okay, some essential amino acids. It can be some essential amino acids or yeast to hybrid selection can also be uh, um, done with a color reaction. Okay, so it can, the reporter gene can uh, show some color also. Okay, so here, as you can see that in this plate, uh, the the yeast has grown, which means that there is a there has been interaction between bait protein and the prey protein. That's why the yeast has grown because when there was interaction, only then the transcription of the reporter gene occurred. But if the bait and prey protein, if they are not interacting, the yeast cannot grow. Okay, so here the yeast yeast did not grow, but here in this case yeast grew. Okay, but here yeast did not grow. So what, what does it mean? It means that our bait and prey protein, pro, it can be protein A and protein B, they interacted in this case, but here our bait and prey, prey protein, they did not interact. Okay, so this is one way of selection. So another way of selection could be uh, the, by, the, by the color reaction. Okay, so our reporter gene shows some color in the media. If there is a color, Let's say that means that bait and prey protein, they are interacting. If there is no color, there is no color, that means that bait and prey protein are not interacting. So this is how we know if there is interaction or not. So now, moving further, what is the variant of yeast to hybrid screening, which is also called yeast one hybrid? So what is, what, what is it? Yeast one hybrid assay, it examines protein DNA interaction. He, you remember, yeast to hybrid screening is for protein protein interaction, whereas yeast one hybrid assay is for protein DNA interaction. A query, pro, a que, query protein is directly fused with the activation domain and expressed in a yeast strain containing various target DNA sequences upstream of the reporter gene. 
if the query protein or protein of interest binds to a particular target sequence or the DNA sequence, the associated DNA activation domain will activate reporters in expression. Okay, so let me explain you with the with with the diagram here. You can see that here we have the target sequence and this is our prey protein. That means the, the protein that is interacting with our target se sequence. You can see when this prey protein interacted with the target sequence, the activation domain came near to our reporter zine, thereby activating the expression of the reporter zine. So this means that there is an interaction between um, this, this protein and our target DNA sequence. If there is no interaction, then what happens? Then this uh, activation domain will be here, okay? It will not come closer if there is no, and in that case, the reporters in expression will not occur, okay? So if the reporters in expression will occur only when there is interaction. So in yeast one hybrid screen, we fuse uh, our activation domain uh, with the query protein and it is expressed in the yeast yeast strain that has various targeting sequence upstream of the reporter gene and if query protein binds to the target sequence the associated activation domain will activate reporter gene expression okay so now uh, moving further what is yeast 3 hybrid screen in yeast 3 hybrid SS um, Protein interactions are mediated by third component such as an RNA molecule or a, another protein. In this case, the bait protein and prey protein, they do not interact directly, okay? They do not interact directly. Instead, they bind to, for example, an RNA molecule, although with a different uh, sequence specificity. Therefore, only in the presence of a particular RNA molecule, bait and prey will be able to interact and drive reporters in expression. Okay, let me explain you with the diagram. So you see here in this figure, you have a bait protein and the prey protein. The bait protein is fused to DNA binding domain and prey protein has been fused to activation domain. And there is there is this third component here. This component is a, it's a RNA molecule. This is a RNA molecule. So with the help of this RNA molecule, a bait protein and prey protein are interacting, but they are not directly interacting. They are interacting through the help of this RNA molecule. So when they are interacting, that means that there will be the reporters in expression. Okay, so this kind of screening is called yeast 3 hybrid screening because here we have one hybrid, two hybrid, and of course with this RNA molecule in total, uh, there is a, a third hybrid also. Okay. So now, finally, uh, what are the advantages and limitations of yeast to hybrid screening? The first advantage is that it is a straightforward method and it has a fast turnaround time. Uh, the throughput of the technique can be scaled up significantly to screen entire proteome and the technique has been adapted in other model organisms to study specific interactions. These are the advantages. However, there are some disadvantages also or the limitations of this method. One is that this essay can produce high level of false positive and negative interactions. Next is that interactions must occur in the nucleus of the cell in order for the reporter gene to be activated. Proteins that are localized to other cellular compartments may not produce a positive interaction even if they interact directly. Okay. Third point is that the fusion of activation domain and DNA binding domains uh, to query proteins may affect the query protein function in vivo, okay? The, basically, this fusion with these domains may affect the expression of the protein in vivo. And finally, uh, uh, the, the query proteins, they may not be correctly expressed, folded, or modified when expressed in yeast. So it is important to confirm that proteins are functional uh, before deriving interaction data from the assay.